we welcome you to another edition of the Gospel of Uncompromised. We thank God for another day. We thank Him for another opportunity to be in fellowship around His Word. Thank Him, Lord, for all of His goodness, for all of His kindness, for all of His grace and mercy. We do thank God for each and every one of you who are tuned in by way of live internet, whether by Facebook or by YouTube. We thank God for you, and we pray that something will be said uh, to be a blessing to you. Now, if you have questions or comments regarding what you hear on this uh, broadcast, feel free to contact us. You can reach me by email. Uh, my email address is ministerdbush at gmail.com. Dot com. I read and answer all of my emails, so if you have a question or a prayer request, uh, don't hesitate to uh, send me an email. Or you can give me a call or text message, I don't mind that either. Uh, my phone number is 713-203-3474. Also, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank those that support this ministry. We thank you so much for all of your generous donations that you have made in the past, and we're thanking you in advance for whatever future donation you may uh, be led to give. If you are so inclined, you can donate to us by way of PayPal. You can find us there under Minister D. Bush, or you can uh, make your donation by Cash App. Uh, the cash tag is uh, dollar sign the Church of God in H. Once again, that's dollar sign. The Church of God, NH. And again, thank you so much for all of your past donations and whatever future donation you may be led to give. All right, we'd like to invite your attention to uh, the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew chapter 16, and we'll begin reading at verse number 13. Matthew chapter 16, and at verse 13. 13. Matthew chapter 16 and at verse 13 and the word of God says when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that I the son of man am and they said some say thou art John the Baptist some Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets and, and that is uh, a, a problem, a, a pretty common problem that we have in uh, the religious world today. Uh, people will give their own personal uh, opinions. So Jesus poses a question to his disciples, well, uh, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And right away they began to give uh, various and sundry answers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some say I thou art John the Baptist, some say uh, some said Elias and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And at verse 15 now he says, and he said unto them, but whom do ye say that I am? Who, what do you say? You know, see, because they, they were given the answers, uh, you know, based on what other folks have, were thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's a sad uh, problem is most people's beliefs lie in what they've been told. They've never had a, a personal experience, a personal relationship. Never mind what grandma said, never mind what your daddy said, never mind what your pastor said. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you know right. about Jesus? Mm -hmm. And what is your belief based on? Verse 16 now, and the word of God says, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And verse 17, watch this now, and the word of God says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And that, that, that's, that, that's the biggest the, the problem. That, uh, Peter gave the answer that he knew to be true. And it wasn't based on what anybody else said. And Jesus commends him for saying, and he says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. It, it's a blessing to know who Jesus is. 
Amen. Blessed art thou, Simon Bart, John, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you. you. You are not basing your answer on what some man told you. It's a blessing to know who Jesus is. And when you know something for a fact, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. The whole world can go against you, but when you know something for a fact, it doesn't matter what anybody else said. But this is how people can be swayed to go because they don't know stuff. They just they're pro proclaiming stuff. But in you know, somebody can come along and say this, and they'll follow after that. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus had revealed himself to you. Somebody else can come along and say something else, and they're just following after that. So, so Jesus says here in verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-John, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. You are not depending on what some man has said. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-John, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And that's, that's the only way you will get or know who Jesus is except God reveal it unto you. God has to reveal itself to you. You know, and, I, I'm, and unfortunately, a whole lot of people are going around. If you just engage uh, people with a, a theological discussion, they'll begin to tell you all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it won't be long before you hear what my pastor said. Mm -hmm. well, I was reading this book and, and such and such thing. But blessed art thou, Simon bar John, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Okay, okay, go now uh, uh, to uh, St. John chapter 5. Amen, amen. St. John chapter 5. And uh, we'll, we'll read verse 39 there. St. John chapter 5, and then verse 39. You see, uh, our uh, faith must rest on what uh, God reveals to us. We can't depend on what man says. Because man, and th this is unfortunately how... Uh, uh, Cults are so prominent because people are believing entirely on what that man is saying. Mm -hmm. That's how you can have Jim Jones, is in, and, and that's how you can have a David Koresh, and, and, and so forth. Uh, St. John chapter 5, now, and in verse 39, watch this, and the word of God says, Search the scripture. That's why it's so important that you have personal, uh, daily devotion. You should develop. Take about 15 or 20 minutes each day to get yourself in this word. That's all you're going to know. You got you to gotta study. The Bible even tells us, study to show thyself approved. To study to show thyself. You got to study to show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures, for in them ye have eternal, you think ye have eternal life. Eternal life is in the scriptures. Eternal life is in the word of God. Search the scripture, for in them you think you have eternal life. Watch this. And they are they which testify of me. The word, the, the, the Bible is what talks about Jesus. The Bible is what lets us know about Jesus. <coughs> Search the scripture. That's what we better do. Mm -hmm. Okay, go now to uh, Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, chapter uh, 17. Amen, amen. Acts chapter 17, and uh, we get verse 11 here. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Now, now so and now when we open the lesson, now Jesus posed the question to his disciples, uh, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And of course, they, they rattle off a bunch of stuff that somebody, what they had heard, a bunch of hearsay. And, and, and then uh, Peter, uh, of course, let Jesus know that he knew mm -hmm. who he was. And, and Jesus, uh, the Lord commended him for saying, you, did, you didn't go along with all these other fellows. You said what you know. Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. Now watch this now. The word of God says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness in mind, readiness of mind, and watch this, search the scripture daily whether those things were so. See, now, the, 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 these are uh, in this passage of scripture, these people are commonly referred to as the Bereans. 
and they they uh they received the word. They, in other words, they they heard what the apostles had to say, but they didn't take it at face value. They didn't take it at face value, but, but they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. They checked up on what the uh, apostles were saying to them. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. Don't take what your pastor is saying. Don't take what any preacher is saying, but, but verify. Research what he's saying and verify with the word of God. The Bible says over in St. John chapter, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 4, he said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether it's of God or not. How do you try the spirit? You get in his word. Mm -hmm. Those of Thessalonians were more noble. They, they received the word of God. They, they heard what they had, what the apostles had to say, but they searched the scriptures daily. To verify what was being said. And I encourage you to do the same thing today. Check up on your pastor. Check up on these preachers. If, you, if, you, if you're studying this word, if that, if that man veer off, you won't follow that. You'll tug his coat and say, wait a minute, pastor. Uh, if, if the people that were following Jim Jones or following David Koresh, if they had been doing their homework as the Bible admonishes us to do, they wouldn't have followed that. Okay, go still in Saint, go back to St. John now, at chapter 10. Amen, amen. St. John, chapter 10. Who is Jesus to you? And how do you know? Uh, I'm persuaded not, you know, it doesn't matter. Anybody can come along and say, two plus two is nine. I'm not even going to argue with you because I know better. St. John chapter 10 now. And uh, we'll begin reading at verse uh, 19. St. John chapter 10. And we'll begin reading at verse 19. Praise the Lord. St. John chapter uh, 10. And in verse 19. Where God says, there was a division, therefore, among the Jews for these saying. And many of them said, he hath the devil and is mad. Why hear ye him? <laughs> Notice that this man is mad. He's exposed to death. Why y'all listening to him? Mm -hmm. Verse 21, now, others said, thou art not the words. The other one said, these are not the words of him that has the devil. Now, now, now the other folks saying, wait a minute, no, this, this ain't about this devil. These are not the words of folks having somebody full of the devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Okay, now he said, Now, if you be the Christ, then just go on and tell us plainly. You know, there, there was some dispute about that. Verse 25 now, and Jesus answered them, I told you, and he believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Look at, look at all these miracles that I'm performing. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep. As I have said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So, so and, and, and that's why, you know, uh, don't do a whole lot of arguing with folks. Because everybody's not a sheep. Some folks is goats. And it's not the job of the man of God to corral a bunch of goats. In time you open the Bible and show somebody uh, scripture, and they, they, they want to continue to argue. I, I, can't, I can't argue with you because now I gave you scripture. You know, and so when I open the program, I always I, I say, if you have a question, you can email I email I don't mind that. But one thing, I'm not, I'm not just going to go back and forth. I'll answer your question to the best of my ability according to the word of God. But now, when you start arguing with the word of God, I, I'm going to have to let you go. A sheep, he said, my sheep hear my voice. Now, if you belong to God, you're going to hear the word of God. Mm -hmm. My sheep hear my voice, 
and I know them, and they follow me. You know, even though there's some, some, there's, there could be something in the word that, that, that's hard, it may cut you, but you're not going to fight it if you belong to God. Only thing you can do at that point is just say, Lord, help me to come up. Don't try to bring the word down to you. Don't try to twist it and make the word say something it doesn't say now. But ye believe not because ye are not my sheep. You don't belong to me. That's why you don't believe the word of God. As I say unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. If you belong to the Lord, no, nobody can, can't take that from you. No one can take your salvation from you. That's why you don't have to fear these men who, who say they're going to put you out of the church. They can't put you. They, they didn't put you in the church, so they can't put you out of it. Oh, they didn't put you out of that organization, man, and that's okay. And I give them eternal life. Eternal life is in Jesus Christ. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man shall be able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. Now, we just opened the lesson over in Matthew 16, where Jesus posed the question. He said, who do Men say that I am. Now, there's, there's a, you know, some confusion around the different uh, religious circles uh, as to who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And Peter answered that question plainly. He said, Thou art the Christ, Son of the living God. <clears throat> now, Jesus is saying, I and my Father are one. But now, now that does not... Now, Jesus is not saying that he is the eternal, uh, uh, that he's the eternal father. That's not what he's saying here. <clears throat> Watch it. Okay, let's read on a little bit now. Then Jesus, then the Jews took up stones against, to stone, took up stones again to stone him. And Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Why y'all want to stone me? I, I've done nothing but good works. Well, now watch this here. At verse 33, the Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not. It's not the good works that we, we, we got a problem with. But for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, I say, ye are gods? And if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent unto the world, thy blasphemes? Because I said, I am the Son of God. Now Jesus is clearly saying, who he, he said, I am the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He didn't say he was God Almighty. He said, I, he, he said, I am the Son of God. Now watch this, verse 37. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. Don't believe me. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Now, now, now believe the words because the Father is in me. The Spirit of uh, the, the, the Most High, the Spirit of God was in Jesus. The Spirit was in him. <clears throat> Amen. All right, all right, go now to uh, First John, the first epistle of John, uh, chapter 5. Amen. Amen. First John, the first epistle of John, chapter 5, we begin reading at verse 1. Amen. First John, chapter 5, and at 
person, no matter what God says, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Christ means uh, God's anointed. Whosoever believes that Jesus, the Son of God, is the anointed one, is of God. And everyone that loved him, that <clears throat> that begot loved him also is begotten of him. But this we know that we love the children of God. And we when we love the children of God, when we love God, we keep his commandments. And you got a whole bunch of folk out here saying they love God, but they're doing everything they're big enough to do. If you love God, you're going to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. You're going to honor his word. Mm -hmm. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. What, what God asks us to do, what God requires of us is not grievous. But we just want to follow this whole flesh. We want to do any, any and everything that the flesh wants to do. And God didn't ask anything just, just super hard of us. You know, we'll deal with that some other time. <laughs> Amen. But the word that I said in, in chapter, chapter, uh, verse 4 now. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. If you're born of God, you're going to overcome this world. If God is in you, you're going to overcome this world. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth in he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This is he that cometh by water and the blood. Even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost. These three are one. These three are one. And there are three that bear record or that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Mm -hmm. And these three agree in one. Watch verse 9. Watch this. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Now, again, what God, what God says overrides or supersedes what man says. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of his son. God bear witness to his son. He that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not on the record that God gave his son. And we know God gave his only begotten son, that who should ever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Eternal life is in Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, mm -hmm. and his life, and this life, brother, is in his son. He hath made the son, he that hath the son. Listen, he that hath the son have life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You don't have the Son of God, you don't have salvation. These things have I written unto you that ye believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Okay, all right. Run now to uh, set, uh, First Timothy, rather. First Timothy. <clears throat> uh, First Timothy chapter 2. Amen, amen. First Timothy chapter uh, 2. And we'll begin reading at 
verse number four. <clears throat> first Timothy chapter two. And uh, it began reading at verse number four. But God says, who will have all men to be saved? God wants everybody to be saved. But now, will, that, will everybody be saved? No. Because everybody's not going to believe. Everybody's not going to humble themselves. Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. God wants you, and, and now we open the lesson, he said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but everybody's not going to search the scriptures. There's, some, there's a whole lot of folks that's just going to sit back and take what their pastor is saying. Who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. Watch this. There is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. God has always had go-betweens. You, we, God is too holy. We can't go directly to him. We need access to God, and we get that access through Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, uh, uh, um, uh, Moses, it, with the children of Israel, Moses was the mediator. He stood between uh, uh, God the Father and the people. And Moses even said over in Deuteronomy chapter 18 that God was going to raise up a prophet like him, and that we should, he, him shall he hear in all things. Now, there have been some crazy men down through the years to, to come along to say that prophecy was speaking about them, but Moses was talking about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the prophets were talking about, the, were pointing to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Okay, we're getting ready to close now. Go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5. Amen, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> we'll pick it up at verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and at verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and in verse 18, where God says, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us by himself, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. He's reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ now. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Let's listen now. Verse 19, to wit that God was in Christ. God was in Christ. Yes, he was. Spirit of the Lord was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. That, now, he wanted to get us back to him. You know, ever since Adam uh, messed up in the garden, then that, that created a separation. That was a, 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 a gulf or a barrier. And so Jesus came along, and now that, that's what connects us back to Christ. Bible says that Adam of uh, Jesus was the second Adam. Jesus uh, uh, was was born uh, like Adam was. Adam, Jesus was created. <clears throat> to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We, we are ambassadors, we are representatives of Christ. Just like an ambassador to a foreign uh, nation. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are uh, an ambassador to, uh, you know, Japan or China, uh, they, they literally... You, where they, the building that they occupy, that is literally considered a uh, foreign soil. We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. 
we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. Now, how are we, we going to do that, though? We got to believe on Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's the only way you can be righteous, is by the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing you can do of your own that can make you righteous. You can you can uh, be moral, and and you you can stop all of your 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 uh, ways. You can stop smoking. You can stop drinking. Uh, whatever it is that you're doing, you can stop all of that. But that doesn't make you righteous. Mm -hmm. It is. Because Jesus Christ, the Son of God, went to the cross and shed his blood. And God raised him up after three days. That's what makes us righteous. We have to believe on him. And we are righteous. Through and by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll leave it right there. We thank God for you. We thank God for all things in the Lord. name of the Lord Jesus. Hope it says something. To help somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling and present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.